Hello people, this is a video about uh, last night's uh, general election question time I suppose, well not really question time but it's a general election so I thought well I wasn't going to do one but then I thought you know I've seen a lot of people talking about it and all that and and you know I thought well, what the hell let's, let's do it but the first thing I'd like to point out is I just cannot believe that the Prime Minister is not there. Um, it is just unbelievable, really, to have a Prime Minister, Theresa May, sending a more confident person to a job interview. Because that's what this is, essentially. This is a job interview that you're asking the people to trust you. And when you send somebody who is more confident than you, um, it's mind-boggling, really. Um, Right, I'll, I'll get on to the first question. I work, I pay my taxes. I haven't had a pay rise in years. I live alone and see all my bills going up. Working people are the backbone of this country. How are you going to help people like me? That's a difficult one in a way. Um, well, first thing first is is all the leaders have got to understand there is a complex there's a complex system of things in it because you know the debt the country's in now is massive and and that has an impact to what any of the gov any of them can do. All these leaders are governed by the debt, and you know that's the problem we've got and. And at the end of the day, it all comes back down to, yeah, all right, you're paying your tax, you're paying all your tax, you're working, yeah, that's great. But how much do that person who asked the question want to feel secure, want to be able to get hospital treatment uh, when they need it, um, wants to feel safe if they find the police there turn up within, you know, all of it comes back down to public services and you know that rhetoric of oh well I pay this you know, and things are getting tougher for me well that's that's because of the debt because <laughs> of 2008 <laughs> um, how can they make it better first thing first is fundamentally you, you know people's got to pay more if you want the best public services you've got to pay for it through tax and 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 all the parties are too scared to say that reality is if you want better public services money it has to be paid for and, and tax would have to go up and i think i think i think is i i don't like the way that is done through isolating groups i, I think that's very divisive but then people wouldn't vote for anyone if they come out and say well I'm going to put the tax up across across the spectrum because then it will not force one particular group over another I think when you start doing that you don't help anyone because you've got to put more pressure on the small group as opposed to spreading that sp pressure across the country uh, so I would put tax up across the board and just say to everyone, look, times are going to be very tough for the next for the next few years. Until we know what's happening with the EU, it's going to be tough, tough, very tough. So there isn't an easy answer to that question, really. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll move on to the next one. Is from Gulam Nabi Adam. Hello. Once we have left the EU. How would your party ensure we have the workers on the skills we need to make the UK a success? Thank you. Well, the first thing I would do is stop allowing wealthy people and wealthy banks to turn tr learning, teaching, into a cost. Um, you've got to invest. Um, that's one thing I agree with the um, Labour Party on. Um, all the borrowing they're going to be doing is fundamentally 
to be invested into in into other areas, not particularly um, learning, but that's that's one aspect that is a benefit to the country is 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 learning under labour. Learning was brought in as a cost to the government. To, to the country, it's not a cost. It's an investment. It, you know, if you can get people learning and coming out with new products because they've learned in school, that produces things in the economy. You know, we need things like that. We need people to go to college to learn. You, know? I don't think learning should be an, a, a cost to the country. It's same with healthcare. I don't think healthcare is a cost. Is an investment because if you've got healthy people, less less are likely to be on benefits, let more likely to be into work. You know, so both costs of learning and the healthcare system, both of them, isn't a cost; they're an investment. And and like you know, we've got enough people in this country to do the jobs, so it's not so much about can we survive when we, you know, when we leave? It's, it's a matter of how many people we're going to let in, and and that's a really complex question because let's face it, immigration didn't bring on the country's debt. Uh, it's just madness. It is really madness. At the end of the day, the priority should be the country's debt, and not one single leader on that panel mentioned it. The last two general elections, that's what we got from the Tory party. The debt is the most important thing. The debt is... Where has that gone? What, why is that not a problem anymore? The debt has gone up by over 980 billion. <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, so I'll move on to the next question now. David Mansfield. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, what what are, are your priorities, priorities for making Britain a safer country and the world a safer place? Thank you. What is, that's a difficult one. Um, well, the first thing first is not. It, it, this goes down to the root of people. Um, security, again, goes to policing. I suppose policing. I think policing on the ground is is is, is underestimated massively. I, I think that's a very important area that's been cut and 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 this toy government has been more concentrating on surveillance and hacking into people's information to try and catch them and, and i that's all well and good but you know people are not these people that wants to do bad things they're not stupid they will cover themselves like you know, on those things and i think sometimes Having police, having police walking through neighbourhoods, and you see them all the time, and you and you get to know them, you know that's when people starts talking and people starts to trust people, and because that's been taken away, and now you don't get that. And even if you do see a, a, a community officer or something walking through, chances are it'd be a different person, and you don't get that trust and that that relationship starting, you know. So. That's the first thing, and the second thing is to really have a debate about what do our country do. It's, it's such a complex issue around selling weapons on one hand, but then making money on the other. <laughs> what do you do? You know, billions of pounds of weapons we make and we sell off to other countries. You know, and. And I think that's got to be a big question because if you if you send if, if you go selling weapons, eventually those countries might end up coming to a a deal an agreement, and then those weapons could potentially be turned on us. So you know it's all well and good selling weapons to make billions of pounds, but at any time those weapons could be turned on us. So I think we need to really have a good look at. Where we're selling the weapons to, who we who we are selling the weapons to, and what are they doing with those weapons themselves? Obviously, some countries might not be using them. They might just be a go-between 
between another country that, that we wouldn't allow to sell weapons to. So I think we need to have a complete chain of understanding where all these weapons are being, well, where they're being used to, I suppose, and, and, and if they're being sold on to other countries that we would not sell, sell on directly. And if that's the case, we stop selling them. Um, that would be a hit to our money, to, to taking money, but life is more important than money, from my point of view. Um, sadly, that's not the world we live in at the moment. The world we're living in at the moment is all about how much profit and how much money you can make. And that does make me sad, to be honest. Uh, I was trying to think of a bigger word, <laughs> but sad is the biggest word I can come up with. Uh, greed and selfish behaviour is the key word today. Is you know, and it's just very. Oh, I do this. I pay this. It's, it's a very. It's like it's it's got so bad now, and it really does upset me. Uh, so I'll move on now. President Trump is pulling out of the Paris Climate Change Agreement. How would the panelists deal with that? Thank you. Oh, President Trump. <laughs> uh, the more he does, the more people just laugh at him. Um, what would you do? Well, I think the best way to Trump, the best way to convince Trump is to show him the economics behind renewable energy. Um, I think trying to convince him when he hasn't got the IQ to understand what climate change is, is pointless. You, you may as well just talk to your hand because I don't think he understands it. Uh, he hasn't got the patience, he hasn't got the understanding, he hasn't got the caring aspect of it. Uh, you know, we keep saying about oh, climate change is going to change this, but it already is. You know, throughout the country, I think on a monthly basis, our country is being flooded or other natural disasters. And scientists are like, well, well, yeah, but we can't, we can't blame that because of climate change. We've got to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is, progressively, over years, weather events has been getting stronger. And, and that can be associated to climate change. But, but with Trump, it's pointless even going down that road with him because he ain't interested in that. All these, he is that, he is the pinnacle of what I just said, selfish, greedy behavior. And that is the pinnacle. And what I find so hard is he got people to vote for him. He's the pinnacle of that type of behavior. Greed, selfishness, I'll take what I want. Um, so I think the only way you get him to convince himself is to show him that renewables are more profitable. And I think the the, the head of um, Tesla, um, I can't remember his name now, Elon Musk, I think his name is, I think that's what he's been doing with Trump. I think he understands Trump and, and I think he's he's gone to some of the meetings with Trump to explain, look, there's billions of pounds of profit to be made here. Uh, just do not go down that road. And I think if Trump pulls out of this agreement, it would be another global organization that is being destroyed because of a selfish, greedy man that I don't know how he got into that, how he became president, but I think that's the best way to tackle Trump, is to hit him with the economics and, and to show him that more and more countries are starting to move over to him and, and they're seeing benefits. And, and I think that's the best way to, 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 to convince Trump. I don't think you can handle Trump because not even, not even the Republican Party can handle Trump. Um, they're just trying to manage the outcome of what he's doing. Um, so that's my view on that one. Uh, now, the last question. Good evening, and it comes from Neil Plucknett. Oh, yeah. In what way does your leadership have the talent 
and the character required to take this country forward into the future. Thank you. In what way does your leadership have the talent and the character needed to take this country forward? Huh. Typical PBC, isn't it? You could tell that was a planted question. Um, not planted in the sense that the BBC uh, made it up. Probably just somebody that bloke probably did ask that question, and it was just picked by the producers. Um, it's not a direct question why Theresa May ain't there, but it's a loaded question. And Amber Rudd, on two occasions, made me laugh because she loved to be in there. You could tell she was in her element. That has put her centre stage to replace Theresa May. No question about it, because she did hand. As much as I hate the toy pirate, she did handle herself pretty well. And and some of the smirking she was doing was just unbelievable. I think the first one she started laughing is when she said, Ch -ch -ch, I look at our record or something like that, she said. And then she started smirking. She knew what she was saying was total crap. And then on this question, she was even smirking even more because she knew it was a question that made her look good. Um... And that little remark about that, that was a good spin on hitting Jeremy where his MPs ain't supporting him. That was a good, that was a good, uh, good, good uh, comeback, I suppose. But ultimately, you, you, your leader felt she wasn't good enough to go to those debates, but yet she feels she's good enough to be the leader and the prime minister of the country. Ah, uh, no, I didn't think so. Yeah, uh, well, I'll finish it off there, so I've just got a phone call. So thanks for watching, people. Until next time, ta -da.